This is Guy Raymond from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. You're watching Trucker Josh Vlogs with Diesel. Maybe Frankie, Frankie, and Chevy. Enjoy. Sun has decided to come up and show its pretty face again. We're in Sauk Center, Minnesota. I gotta go deliver this lumber that I got on my trailer into Minneapolis. Uh, into Chanhassen, Minnesota, which is Minneapolis, in my mind. Deliver that, and then we gotta run down south of Minneapolis to go pick up a load that's waiting for us. That load is taking us to Calgary, Alberta back up in Canada. People are expecting us, so we better not keep them waiting. Look at this nice Kenworth over here. Doesn't have the studio sleeper though. It's so hard to find a nice one that, that I like that has the studio sleeper on it. That is a nice looking truck though. I want the 86 inch studio. But the wheelbase can't be any longer than 272 inches. That's the problem. A lot of the tr trucks down here in the US have really long wheelbases. Up in Canada, the maximum length of my entire unit from steer axle to, well, from bumper to bumper, let's say, <clears throat> is 75 feet. That's the longest my unit can be. And my trailer is already 53 feet. So the wheelbase on my truck Legally can't be longer than seven meters. Take the entrance to the right on I-94 East. Seven meters, which is about 283 inches. But, regardless of that, my entire length of my unit can't exceed 75 and a half feet to be legal to drive across Canada. So either I go and buy a shorter 48 foot trailer, which I don't want to do, can't haul as much on that, or I keep my wheelbase to approximately 272 inches. Somewhere in there. I still have to be very careful with the length. So the wheelbase can't be too long, but I want that 86 inch studio sleeper. Otherwise, I don't even want the Kenworth. I don't want those tiny other, those are the tiny sleepers. I travel with my big dog. I want to have the family along with me sometime. It's not going to be just me. So I gotta have a truck that's got decent space. And you know, these Volvos and the Cascadias, the Freightliners, the, the I could get a Kenworth T680 maybe. Got a lot more space, but I wanted the classic look. I wanted the W900, but I mean, we'll see what happens. I'm not ready to buy the truck. I saw all the comments when I was getting this truck fixed. Like, oh, that's, it's time to get the Kenworth. Or, oh, that money could have gone to a down payment for a Kenworth. Oh well, no, I'm not ready for a new truck yet. No, 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 no. You can't just run away as soon as you have problems. Like as soon as the truck breaks, you can't be like, okay, I quit. I'm going back to company driver, or I'm, or I'm selling the truck. I'm getting rid of it. You can't, you can't give up that easily. That you're not gonna be successful that way if you keep, if you give up. Hard times come, and that's probably not even the hardest time I'm gonna have to go through yet with this truck. Last weekend when I spent that what six six thousand five hundred dollars. That's probably not the worst time I'm gonna have yet. It was a bad weekend, but it's not gonna be the worst. I, there were so many comments, and I don't blame you guys. I don't blame you guys at all. It's, it's not like I don't feel those feelings as well. You're probably just typing down the same feelings I'm feeling sometimes, right? Like, oh, you just sell the truck, just get rid of it, get a Kenworth. Well, no, I buy another truck, that truck's gonna have problems too. Oh, it'll have warranty though, but that doesn't really help me because even though the truck is getting repairs done under warranty, it's still down, it's not driving. That means I'm not making money with it and I have these huge four to $5,000 payments every month on a new truck. No, thank you, no, no, no. It's still cheaper to run with this thing and this thing's still got a lot of miles under her or ahead of her. She, she's got a lot of miles out of her. I, I can't give up that easy. I, I know, I really want the Kenworth too. I really want to get into that other truck, but I'm not ready for it. It has, this truck will last another five years yet. So, hard 
times will come, but we gotta remember, just persevere. Because the one thing every successful person has, or what most of them do anyway, the one thing they have in common is perseverance. They get knocked down, they get back up. They get knocked back down again, they get back up again. They don't give up when it gets tough. We'll get there. Life's a journey. Can't expect success all at once. Success is a journey. It's not really a destination. Minahapulous. Minahapulous. I got all that lumber off my trailer. I was so quick I didn't even have time to talk to you guys. It was just bing bang boom, I was gone out of there. 200 meters, turn left on, west 78 street. Oh, sorry I couldn't share that moment of my life in you, uh, with you, but you know, it was just a moment, literally. I got to the yard, I had barely taken my straps off, they were already unloading me, and they had two guys just boom, within like 10 minutes, I was unstrapped, unloaded, and rolling out. So you just gonna have to trust me, I have an empty flatbed behind me now, and we're going to our next shipper, which is about an hour away from here, south of Minneapolis. I'll pick up some good old glass, hopefully it doesn't take them all day and night to load me again. We'll be on our way towards Calgary. I will not have time to stop by at home on the way past, though. I'll have to go right past. <sighs> Unless if some miracle happens. I, I shouldn't say we won't yet. We'll wait. We'll wait and see. Well, we are once again being loaded. They let us into the castle. I only had to wait here. How long have we been here? We always got to wait so long here. Yeah, let's see, when did I get here? I got here at... 3.15? Really? I thought I was here before then. No, no, I was here before that. I was here at 2.30, yeah. 2.30 p.m. They just got me into the dock here now at... 6.30. So two, three, four, five, six, four hours just waiting to get into the castle. So now that we're in the castle, I've got to wait probably about another four hours for them to get me loaded. And then I'll be out of hours for the day. And I'll just have to sleep here on the property. They, they allow us to do that. And then in the morning, start heading to Calgary. So take a look at what we're looking at here. I don't want to complain too much because this is the shipper where I get to uh, tie down and tarp inside. This is also the place where we just barely fit inside. But it fits. One day in the future when I have my Kenworth, I won't be able to fit in here. I'll have to detach and leave the trailer inside and park my truck outside. It's kind of nice having a short wheelbase truck and these Volvos turn so sharp. I can get in anywhere. It's just like driving a car. It, it, I'm going to miss that a lot when I get out of this truck, but this truck's going to go another five years yet. It's, it's got a lot of miles, got a lot of miles in her yet. Like I said earlier, can't give up on it that easy. If we all gave up on our trucks that easy, no one would ever get their freight because there'd be no truckers on the road. <laughs> here we go. They're gonna load me up here. I'm gonna tie her down. We're gonna tarp it and we're gonna go and park and have a snooze. So here's the load. I'm not exactly happy with how it was loaded. I mean, it's legal. I'm pretty sure it'll be legal, but they put way more weight on my trailer than they did on my drive, so it's gonna make it a very rough ride. And they also left this huge gap at the front here. So that's gonna make that into a big parachute behind me all the way to Calgary, killing my fuel economy. Like, look at this, from here, back of the tires here, that's where the freight starts. It should be centered between the axles, right? You gotta be very careful that those axles aren't going to be overweight because the majority of all of this weight is now on my trailer and like i said it's going to be a very rough ride and i confronted the guy on it i said well why did you start so far back he just got defensive and started getting upset so it is what it is i mean it looks like it's still going to be legal but not the way i would have done it whatever let's get this tarped i have two and a half hours so I can get going. If I can get this tarped in less than two and a half hours, I can get down the road a little bit yet. 
gonna be a bumpy ride all the way to Calgary. I mean, he was trying to tell me that, oh, we're supposed to load it as if it's a 48 foot trailer. So I'm like, yeah, so he centered it on my 53 foot trailer, but someone needs to tell him that on a 53 foot uh, uh, flatbed, what they do is they add five feet onto the back. That's the only difference between a 48 and a 53. So you take five feet off the back and then you center the load between that point and the front of the trailer. And that's centered between the axles that'll distribute the weight evenly. But instead, he took like three and a half feet off the front, three and a half feet off the back, and then centered it in the exact same place as he would have otherwise. I don't know what he was talking about, but he was starting to get defensive and I didn't want to get him all upset and start an argument. But uh, it takes them hours to load this. So if I, if I wanted them to move it now, it would take them all night just to, because it's nailed down to the deck, right? They have to unload the whole thing and then reload it. So like I said, it, it looks like it's gonna be legal. But I've never seen this guy here before. I think he was new. Uh, it's gonna be a bumpy ride and my fuel economy is not gonna be as good as it could have been if they would have just centered it properly and not given me a big parachute to pull behind me all the way to Calgary, but it's okay. We're gonna chop it up real quick. Like I said, we have two hours and 27 minutes left on our 14 hour clock. If I can get that thing tarped, cause it's pretty simple, right? It's just a square block. If I can get that thing tarped, we can get out of here. We can get a little ways down the road tonight yet. So stop wasting time. It is what it is. What's done is done. Let's just deal with it. Got a little warm while I was tarping. But there we go, all ready to go. Got my parachute all tarped up. Got this tarp, this extra tarp strapped to the front to hold down that flap at the front. Just took two tarps, so I'll, my two center tarps are holding down the front and back. Let's go see how much time we have left. Hour and 37 minutes, just under an hour to do that, Diesel. We're getting faster. Right on. Okay, so. I already told them, thank you. So yeah, we're just gonna open up this door, go get our paperwork and see how far we can get tonight yet. I've got the repairs done in BC last week, that expensive repair job. The turbo actuator got replaced, alternator got replaced, batteries got replaced. I don't know what happened, but my fuel economy got so much better. So much better. Okay, I'm gonna talk in metric here for you Americans, I'm sorry. Uh, it's just the way I am. But I'm getting 12 liters per 100 kilometers better fuel economy. I'm burning 12 liters less. That's about three gallons every 60 miles less for you Americans. It's amazing. That's, if I drive a thousand kilometers in a day, that's 120 liters less that I burn every day. And every 60 miles, three gallons that I'm not burning that I was burning before this repair. Why are you flashing your lights? Oh, there's another lane, buddy. You can go around them. Who's flashing at who? Someone's flashing their lights at someone. What do you want? But yeah, fuel economy has gotten incredibly better. Incredibly better. We're saving tons of money now. So the fuel savings alone will pay for that repair in no time. All right. Been to several truck stops and rest areas already and everything is full. So let's see if this one's full too. Kinda of looks like it is. Proceed to the highlighted route. We made it through the city at least, but we've been trying to find somewhere to park unsuccessfully. Hmm. Everything is just jam-packed. We're gonna make a spot here somewhere. 